Hello everyone, welcome to the Let's Talk Motorsport, a show where a couple blokes have fun chatting all things motor racing. My name is Daniel and uh, once again in the studio, I'm joined alongside Alex. Alex, how are you mate? Unfortunately, uh, Ivan couldn't be with us because he's too busy um, just building his car. Yes. Um, his former RX-8, but how are you mate? How yeah, you I'm fine. Uh, it was a bit of a quiet week in motorsport, but uh, nevertheless, F1 produced yeah, quite the entertainment. Yeah, there's only one category, but there's some big, big stories. And very imp- it was a very, very important weekend for Formula One. Not very. only because it is the last before they head into the summer break, but it is also a crucial round for a one driver named Sergio Perez uh, with oh, Red yeah. Bull um, to determine his future. So let's get straight into the Belgium Grand Prix, the famous Spa circuit that everyone loves. Um, it started off uh, with some pl- um, penalties. Uh, Max yep. Verstappen got a 10 place penalty for some changes in the car, uh, but it wasn't as bad as Yuki Tsunoda with a 60 place grid penalty, which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, so he, I'm surprised he even went out in quality anyway. Um, but uh, it, that wasn't just the, um, the drama. Uh, no. Race winner which was George Russell, we will get into that, uh, unfortunately he got disqualified after his car was underweight by roughly one and a half kilos. Um, so instead of getting a beautiful Merc 1-2, um, the win was handed to his teammate, Lewis Hamilton, but a fast Oscar Piastri in P2, carrying that pace on from uh, Hungary. Yeah, it was quite um, interesting because... Uh... I thought he was going to win for a while. Mm. Um, he definitely made it interesting, but uh, obviously George crossed the line first. Um, yeah, didn't stay that way. But we just watched his celebration literally minutes before we began this um, the show. It's quite hard to watch. It is. He was so proud of himself, and then... <laughs> the the drive, the strategy was brilliant. It oh. just wasn't legal. Exactly, <laughs> and you kind of need to be legal if you're going to be yeah. racing and these sort of things. But no, that besides from that though, he drove sensational. Um, he was one of the only cars, I believe, besides from Kevin Magnussen, to pull a one-stop strategy, and uh, he did it very beautifully. Um, he pretty much maintained the lead up until um, when everyone did their first stops or so. He did rather well. Um, mm-hmm. Unfortunate things happen. Um, what can you do? It wasn't his fault. No, but I mean, he he didn't control the whole race though. Lewis did, and I was chatting to you when we were doing our watch along, where I was like, I wonder how Mercedes would deal with this one-two situation because if you remember the week before, McLaren didn't quite deal with it very well. No. <laughs> um, and I like the way that Mercedes went about it because it it was the exact same race situation, mm. the same thing. Lewis led the whole thing. Mm. They did a, they did different strategies, and Russell came out in front, and they just left it. Yeah, exactly. And well, if you think about it, they've actually had experience in this yes. problem, uh, especially in the hybrid era with Hamilton and Rosberg, Bottas and Hamilton. Whereas McLaren haven't really, uh, especially in Not the current ownership, they no. haven't really had that problem. I remember while. back when uh, the '90s and the early thousands. Oh, yeah. That's when there was problem, e.g. Prost and Senna. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a big problem. Yeah, no, it, Mercedes, just, Toto just knows what to do in these situations. He knows how to calm the driver down. Lewis especially, um, the veteran, he knows how to handle these situations well as well. He's not a well, steaming young gun. He wasn't thrilled with it, but, you know, at the end of the day, these these drivers, they spend hours doing briefings before the race. They mm. know what's going to happen unless there's foreseen um circumstances so with the mclaren saga the week before i'm sure that lando would have known that they wanted oscar to win if he had the lead and then oscar would have known that they wanted lando to win if he had the lead Mm. so like these things shouldn't be happening on the track while the race is on Mm. they would have discussed these things before and it was evident that mercedes did yeah where they said you race Hamilton made a few mistakes in the last lap. Obviously, he ended up winning in the in, in the end result. But mm. on track, he didn't. And he, yeah, turn one, uh, two or three laps in a row at the end, the last three laps, he made mistakes and mm. couldn't actually pass Russell himself, despite having much fresher tyres. 
an inconsequence, a, a fast charging Oscar Piastri yes. as well. One who, more lap, I reckon. One more lap, but also if you remember, he had a horrible pit stop where he uh, yeah, sorry, went yeah, yeah, way yeah. too far into his box. He hit the guy um, with the jack. And ended up being, I think, 4.4 seconds. Yeah, uh, that, and for those who don't listen to Formula One, the average is roughly anywhere from two to um, two and a half, two and a half seconds. Yeah, about that. Um, three seconds is pretty much slow. So 4.4, yeah. um, that's very slow. So uh, yeah, that, that's what cost him, I reckon. He would have uh, definitely been up there if it wasn't for that. Um, but amazing thing though, Mercedes Friday, they had a horrible day. They actually had upgrades that they decided yeah. to chuck and go back to their old thing. And a uh, good thing they did. Um, That's crazy how they, they bring upgrades, but then bring the old spec as well, just to change. Cause why not? That's smart though. Cause we've seen it the likes smart. of V-Carb and, um, Aston Martin, um, try some new upgrades that went literally the opposite way. I mean, what tip teams typically do is they'll upgrade one car. I mean, Aston Martin do this a lot. Mm. They upgrade Fernando Alonso's car and then leave Stroll with the last spec and then compare the pair that way. But Mercedes didn't do that. They, they brought, did both. They did both and then scrapped it immediately mm. and ran the old spec on Saturday and Sunday and ended up, well, on track finishing one too. I wonder if any of the weight drama actually occurred because of that. Um, yeah, maybe. potentially. I don't like know. you know, the new parts may have added that kilo and a half, and then removing it didn't, and then mm. no one noticed. Like when you have a car that's underweight at a local racetrack, you can understand why. You know, there's mm. not many people around. You see people just chucking a couple of bits of lead and yeah. call it a day, call it a day, <laughs> get away with it. <laughs> but in F1, you have thousands, oh not thousands, hundreds of people working on this car in and out of the factory, mm. and it still is underweight. Like it just doesn't. Yeah, that's what I you mean. Think it's just they'd awkward. Have hundreds of processes and documents and strategies mm. and checklists, and it's quite embarrassing, yeah. especially and when you win. Especially when it's one point five kilos. Now that might not sound like a lot, but in like racing terms, you know. Well, um, it, it may not sound a lot even in racing terms, but in Formula One, that's a lot because mm. you know the cars only weigh what they only weigh like seven hundred kilos or something like that. Well, they're quite heavy. Oh, no, They're about, um, well, I can't remember the number exactly, but it. apparently next, by the way, next year, actually going to be even heavier ever so slightly, um, which <laughs> is a bit silly, but uh, in 26, that all changes anyway. Oh, so you've written, yeah. yeah, so about 798 kilos. So that's, kilos. I think it's going to put an extra 80 next year. So he year. was 70, he was 796.5. Mm. It makes a difference though. But yeah. uh, might not not a huge one, but uh, Look, you probably wouldn't notice on track. But the rules rule. That's it. And uh, unfortunately, he got caught. Well, they did. They got caught, and unfortunately, he missed out on a a beautiful result. And that was actually a beautiful last lap too. Like all three of them almost there as the yeah. fireworks go off. It was really cool to see. Um, but Red Bull, on the other hand, they were doing so well in the wet, but when it came to the dry, yeah, where were they? So, yeah, Max Verstappen qualified first, but had the 10 place group penalty. He was six tenths faster than Charles, wasn't he? That's what was about, P2, I was yeah. about to say that. And, um, yeah, I, I, I thought he would storm. Like, he gained three spots on lap one. Mm. And I thought he's caught Lando. He'll pass Lando. He'll pass Carlos. He'll pass Lewis. He'll pass Oscar. Mm. He didn't pass any of those guys. That's what I mean. Lap 20 or. Actually, no, sorry. He did pass Perez because Perez is like. So but, did everyone else. Did. Yeah, so did everyone else. <laughs> I think he finished eighth or something. But um, yeah, look, it, it wasn't a bit of a shock. And maybe these FI, you know, drama regulations could be the reason. It could just be that they've gone backwards or it just could be that everyone else is getting faster. Who actually knows? No one will know. But it makes us happier. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Well, <laughs> That's what I was saying. I was like, it's it's, a, it's nice for a change to not constantly hear the Dutch anthem every time we well, go to a Grand Prix event. It's been a, a while since event. we've actually heard it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, what, three, four? I reckon it'd been a month in time. The last race he won was Spain. Jeez. That, yeah, and that was before... Um, I mean, I'll get it up. Jeez, that's wild, isn't it? The last race, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he won was Spain. That's and cool. Yeah, because then it was Austria. Um, yeah, uh, the start yeah. the triple header. He won the triple header. The first one. Yeah. Spain was the last time he won. So four races, he wow. hasn't won. And three of those, he hasn't even been on the podium. That's crazy. 
Welcome back. Um, it is hard to believe, Daniel, that um, Max, as we just discovered, has not been on the podium for the last three races. It's unreal, isn't it? Sorry, sorry. Three out of four races. Considering this time last year, he won how everything. He won literally everything. I think only two others yeah, won something. Two other races. But we've had, um, well, we've like you said last show, we actually had the two McLarens, the two Mercedes, the two Ferraris, and the one Red Bull. It's still the case. Still the case. <laughs> um, it's just yeah, um, we're a race. Yes, Mercedes now have a total of three wins compared to. So actually, they have the. No, they don't have. I was going to say they have the most wins, but then Max has. He had a good Max start. Max has five. Yeah. yeah so, um, it's definitely Sorry. really close. But yes, uh, seven actually. But in saying that, we're only halfway in the year. Uh, True. Heaps of races left. We're only around fourteen out of twenty-four or twenty-three, something like that. Um, so, we will get into this part of the show where we talk about Sergio Perez because there is some big things happening, maybe as we speak. Uh, and maybe when yeah. this goes live, it will already have happened. Um, but we'll get into that shortly. But let's quickly uh, go through the field. Go through the field and uh, work our way down. So obviously, Lewis Hamilton's officially the Belgian Grand Prix winner uh, with Oscar Piastri, who unfortunately had that bad stop. It uh, could have, would have, should have. Um, but he Literally. definitely had the pace to to do it. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, Charles Leclerc, he'll be happy to not have a bad weekend for once. He's been a while since he's been on the podium too. He was um, genuinely. Genuinely quick. He was. Like, he wasn't, like, you know, get the pole and then lose by 20 seconds. Mm. Genuinely, he only finished four seconds. He was quite two. disappointed, apparently, though, uh, based off his yeah. interview. But uh, compared to how he's been going the, since Monaco. Um, Look, the lap, time, the lap time he did in qualifying was not a fluke, but it came from nowhere. Mm. Right. And it would have been hard to, you know, do that throughout the whole race. But, you know, obviously third with the promotion. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, very good job from Leclerc, and it's nice to see him happy again. Exactly, and uh, someone who actually behaved a little bit nicer this time around. I don't think he even said anything, did he? Well, no, well maybe nothing controversial. No, uh, he didn't go on top of a Mercedes or anything. He actually had a. He was actually pretty chill this time around. Was. Max Verstappen, uh, fourth place. Uh, he was like, "Oh yeah, that was the best we can do." It was he actually accepted it? Uh, he was actually, it's funny how it was uh, nice. immature he was at Hungary and how mature he was here. Um, a week difference, huh? Um, maybe, yeah. maybe it could be the sim, who knows? Um, because yeah. if you guys don't know, he, he's not allowed to race <laughs> he's late not into to, the night now. No, he's not allowed to be on the simulator <laughs> during race weekends anymore. Mm. Well, at I least I think that's a fair rule. It is. Well, if you think about it, they pay him to be in that car, do yes. an X amount of speed to win. Uh, cause well, I think last time I said $140 million you get, uh, or euro or something like that for winning the constructors. Um, and that's yeah. on the line as we speak still, but like also that's your job. Like I know he does sim racing the side of a team red line, I believe it is, mm. but like, you know, you have a calendar, you got an F1 weekend on, do exactly. F1. Like well, you shouldn't be doing that, especially bringing the simulator to the track, which is quite crazy in my eyes like i can't even move it around my yeah. own office space let alone bring it on a plane mm. but um yeah, they're not light aren't they <laughs> mine's not no but um you know my point like you know he had to do a job you're a formula one driver mm. be a formula one driver well the thing is um he was up at 3 a.m because one of their drivers couldn't do it or something like that so he filled in ah, um okay. so i think he can if still sim team red line, do not ask max for no. ever again he can still sim race <laughs> just not on the F1 in a situation where it's past midnight, past well, the X amount of time. Good news for him. Uh, there's a summer break, so he can sim race all he exactly. wants for the next four there weeks. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That, that's why the summer break's here. So, yes, to cater for Max. Um, uh, sixth place, oh, sorry, fifth place is uh, Landon Norris. He had yep. a bit of a interesting weekend. He just he lost it at turn one, and that's that's where he said he, he cost him. Well, um, he did make night. a mistake on turn one, lap one. Which should cost him a place or two, but he had the pace mm. to be up there. And I said it on our watch along. Mm. Everyone pitted. Russell started the whole thing. He stayed out, happened. didn't he? Norris, Norris stayed out another yeah. five laps. Mm. And the undercut at Spa is incredibly overpowered. Mm. And McLaren thought, nah, we'll just race <laughs> Carlos Sainz, who he did beat, yes. Yeah. But, you know. He also 
was right behind his team in Piastri, and he finished second. Yeah, and Piastri was a weapon. So exactly. Just and think we, of what Norris could have done. And we saw what Norris did on the last stint last race. Mm, exactly. So I think McLaren butchered that for Norris. Nothing against Lando at all. Mm. But um, yeah, once again, McLaren's not doing well with strategy. No. Um, speaking of not for great Norris. strategy, although they had it right this time around. Uh, Carlos Sainz, sixth place. The man was still with no seat yet. Um, he had a weird strategy. Yes, the man with no seat. That was really odd. Mm. So if you didn't watch the race, he was the only driver on the whole field, I think besides Joe Guan or whatever, mm. to start on the hards, mm. which means you'd go longer. He did go longer. Yes, that part worked. But then he pit nine laps after he pitted again. I'm like, what? Oh, what was yeah. the point of that? I don't get why they did that. He did half the race on one set of hard tires, mm. did a medium for nine laps, I think even Ricardo managed to do more laps on a soft. Yeah, he did about um, 11, I think, or nine, yeah, somewhere about, around there. About 10. Um, that was, oh, there was eight, actually. But you know what I mean? Like, still. Still, yeah, yeah. Um, it just made no sense. You go long for a reason. Exactly. To do a one stop, potentially. If you're going to do a short, you might as well just stick those softs. Because didn't, just go, didn't go, Russell go for pit it. on, he pit lap eight, lap nine. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, um, we couldn't believe that he was on a one stop. Um, compared to everyone, I think, well, I think it was probably 12 or something like that, but, uh, Which, yeah, well, uh, Sergio Perez though, P7, uh, he pitted on the last lap or something like that for some softs, uh, in attempt to do a fast slap. I'm not too sure if he actually managed to get it done or not. Uh, I think he did. Um, but, uh, definitely, uh, not where he should be in terms of that car, because obviously, like we said, we'll get into that. Um, he obviously yet again. Got beaten by his teammate. Um, now you know, easy. It's not easy being Max Verstappen's teammate, but uh, still, um, the weekend that mattered the most. But here, in saying that, this it was nice to see him finally ahead of his teammate in the in the in the starting grid, though. He got it. Uh, he did get it. Okay, there you go with a one forty four seven. Um, and compared to second place with Lando, which is a one forty five five, but he had the hards. Um, actually, in saying that, McLaren got two, second and third, so there you go. Um, but uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, we're just seeing here. I'm just going through the fastest laps for the last couple of rounds, and Logan, Logan Sargent, Sargent was the second quickest at <laughs> Hungary. He's faster than Max Verstappen. Wow, put him in the Red Bull by three or four tenths. Unreal. Wow, did, did not think I'd say that. Wow, that I mean, he well, wouldn't have got the point anyway because he's never been in the top. No, ten. but that, I've never seen a number two next to his name other than a race number. But uh, <laughs> it, anyway, um, yeah, gee whiz. Uh, P8 is uh, Fernando Alonso. Um, he had an all right weekend. I didn't see too much of him, to be honest. Well, he qualified um, well. He was pretty quick. Another good, decent run this time around. P9, Esteban Ocon didn't hit anyone. He passed cars. He passed two Without cars. Without crashing into them. Unbelievable. Because I was getting flashbacks when he passed, uh, I think it was Gasly. No, uh Magnuson, mm. he passed him on the same spot where he put Perez into the fence <laughs> in the Force Indies. I was like, oh my god, this is going to happen again. Oh, I remember that. Do you remember? Yeah, I can I'm visually see it. When the two right pink now. cars destroyed each other. Oh, he's done yeah. that way too many times. And I can't believe he's uh, been announced as uh, oh, Hass's new driver. Uh, we'll get into that when we go through the silly season. But uh, Daniel Ricciardo, P10. Oh, by the way, um, Alpine had a very nice looking livery. You said it looked yeah. like Alfa um, Romeo. Alfa Romeo. So there you go. It looked quite yep. nice. Obviously, they're promoting the new Deadpool and Wolverine film. Brilliant movie. Love it. I saw it the other day. Um, as I said, Daniel Ricciardo, one point, but it's the point that mattered probably the most. The point that could get him promoted. Exactly. He Just was saying. really happy about it too. Even in 11th, before all the disqualification happened, he was quite satisfied with his weekend. Uh, and he actually admitted coming into the weekend, it could be his very last um, because he didn't know what was going to happen. So to get P10, got to be happy with that, especially when he was on the softs. The only driver to start that on the softs weird. that was interesting. So he, how he, he finished in the points after that first stint, I got no idea. Unbelievable. But uh, Danny proves us wrong again. Exactly. All right, let's run through the rest of the grid while we're at it. Lance Stroll P11. Um, P12, Alex Albon. Uh, he was doing pretty well he this weekend. He should have finished in the points. He should have. We well, got a P3, I think, in FP2 or FP1. What was it? Couldn't yeah. believe it. Um, almost as amazed as uh, Logan, Logan Sargent getting that second fastest <laughs> lap time in the race. 
Um, I'm, still I'm still recovering from that. P13 is Pierre Gasly. A uh, bit of a disappointing run compared to Ocon. Uh, 14th is Kevin Magnussen. Now, I believe he had a one-stop strategy as well. Uh, he's on the move. He's officially announced that he's leaving Haas at the end of the year in favor for Esteban Ocon. 15th is Valtteri Bottas. Um, I think this is his best result in a while. That's um, sad. Yeah, which is really sad. <laughs> and you were actually thinking he was going to have a good result this weekend as well. Um, well. He had the speed. He qualified 12th. And he had a quicker pit stop than Max Verstappen too. Um, which is a shock. Shout out to exactly. Sauber. Yeah, I mean, now he had pit stops for one car, considering Joe didn't make it to the first pit stop. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, another unfortunate result: Yuki Sonoda, after starting sixty place back, sixty places <laughs> back. Uh, unfortunately, he had some. I, I don't know if he had brake issue or something like that. He was uh, struggling this weekend and brace wise. Logan Sargent, seventeenth. Um, that's it. Yeah, really. Eighteenth uh, is Nico Hulkenberg, <laughs> uh, and nineteenth is Joe Guanyu, who, like we said, had that hydraulic issue, which resulted in an oh. early DNF. Hulkenberg had a disappointing one. Yeah, he did. Considering he always finishes 11th. Well, they were in the... Were they in Q3? No, they didn't make it out of Q1. Oh. I, okay. Well, I swore they were in Q3 at one point this year. Yeah, oh, this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but this weekend, no. That's just, no, that's just me covering up. Um, And then in P20, like I said, is unfortunately George Russell, uh, who got disqualified bam, bam, due bam. to that. But uh, that is it for the Belgian Grand Prix. Now we've got a couple weeks of waiting. A month. Uh, sure. August 25th or something like that is when the Dutch Grand Prix is Zandervoort. So Max Verstappen will be looking forward to that. He no. might well and truly. I'm pretty sure I said this last week, didn't I? That. I'm pretty sure he's won every race Maybe since it came back. Since the Dutch Grand Prix has come back, so it'd be great to see the Dutch fans boo. Hopefully, <laughs> um, uh, well, you well, know what's well, going to be interesting. I kind of hope that McLaren wins because then the crowd will look like they're still still, still, still supporting, supporting Papaya. Yeah, exactly. Because they're all in orange. Exactly. But uh, one interesting thing about the Dutch Grand Prix is uh, who will be Max Verstappen's teammate uh, mm. at the Grand Prix. Um, we just outright don't think it will be Sergio Perez. Uh, also, there's question marks if that race happens again after its contract. By the way, I saw the news. You what? I saw the news that Zanvoort may not be returning. Oh, after, really? After, after this con- year? After the next year. Oh, has it got next year's? Yeah, right. Yeah, so I'm uh, not 100% it? sure on that, but to be honest, I don't really like the track anyway. It's not built for a Formula 1. But uh, that is at, at the end of our show. Um, thanks, everyone, who has tuned in and listened, whether you're listening in the bath, like I said, or the car, or your bed, or um, in on the moon for some reason, unless you're, <laughs> if you're at NASA, um, then welcome. Um, but uh, where can you follow us? Well, it's a good, very good question. Um, you can follow us, uh, let's talk dot motorsport on the majority of the social medias. Just search up let's talk motorsport. It's the yellow icon. We're on TikTok, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Spotify. Um, Instagram, Twitter as well. We don't really use Twitter though, but we are on there. And we've also, last but not least, officially announced, uh, released our Facebook community group, haven't we, Alex? Yeah, um, it's where done pretty well actually. It is. We've got currently sixty-five members as we speak. Um, it's basically the number one place where any, if you're a racing fan, you just join there, uh, make some friends. You can post whatever you want as long as it's appropriate, of course, uh, and just get a conversation going. And that's also where you can stay up to date with all our newses. And that's a new word and uh, announcements <laughs> and stuff. Um, so be sure to I think it's join like, the page. It's also the best place to get in contact with us. Absolutely. Like, just through whatever's happening, comment, you know. Yeah, it, it's a great platform. Absolutely. And uh, we're always up for a chat if you uh, need anything at all. Um, so, that's yeah. why this podcast was built. Exactly. To chat about motorsport. Motorsport fans, creating content for motorsport fans. There you go. Exactly. Anyway. That's all from us. Uh, Thanks, Alex, again, for joining me in the studio. My name is Daniel, and uh, we'll see you next week for some more motorsport chit-chat. Bye for now. Bye.